we're going to go over the layout of the hip rafters for this 812 equal slope roof. We'll just take away the hip rafters there for a second. So um, it's ready for its hip rafters. It's got all the common rafters in place. This roof is uh, 36 feet long, but that doesn't really matter. What we need is the, the span of the roof. So the roof is 24 feet wide. That means the run is half of that, it's 12 feet. So all the rafters run the 12 feet direction. And we're gonna use that later on to calculate the line length of the hip rafter. This roof is a 812 slope. So that means the common rafters their slope is when they when they run 12 inches, they rise 8 inches. So that's 8, 12. And it's the same on all four sides. When we lay out a hip rafter at the top, the top cuts, the first thing we lay out is this point here where all the center lines of the rafters meet. So... This, we have a three common rafters meeting at the end of the ridge and the center line of this rafter would run up here and the center line of this one, the same thing, and this one would run here. So this is where the intersection point for all the center lines and the center line of the hip rafter would intersect at the same point. So this is our starting point when we do our layout. So we'll come over here to a piece of stock for a hip rafter. The common rafters in this roof are two by six, so that means the hip rafter is one size bigger. It's two by eight. And there's the, what we're gonna be doing at the top cuts. Now, when we set our framing square for a hip rafter, we use different numbers than when we set our framing square to lay out a common rafter. A common rafter, you'd set your framing square using the numbers eight and 12, the same as the slope of the roof. But a hip rafter has to travel further to, to reach that eight inches. So we use the numbers eight still on the tongue, but on the blade of the square, we use 17. And that gives us the proper angle that the hip rafter runs at. So up at the top here, the way we usually do it is we put a plumb cut line. So marking along the eight side of the framing square, we make a plumb cut line right at the corner of the lumber like this. And that, we're marking on the side of the lumber, but that's actually that center point where everything intersects at the top of the ridge. So that's what we're actually laying out when we lay out this first line here. But we can't write in the middle of the lumber, so we're writing it on the edge. So that first mark is right here. But we have to get back to this point because we've got all this wood in the way, so we have to get back to this point. So we come back this far, but as you can see, that's a horizontal measurement. It's not a sloping measurement. So if we take our tape measure, this is one and one sixteenth inches, approximately one and one sixteenth inches. So that's how far we have to move back from that first line we drew over here on the hip rafter. So again, you have to remember that that's not a sloping length. That is a horizontal length. So you don't measure an inch and a sixteenth along here. You measure an inch and a sixteenth square to that first plumb line. And that gives us this point. And we can draw a plumb line now at this point. But again, that plumb line isn't really going to be at the edge of the lumber. That plumb line is representing this point now that fits into that corner in between the common rafters. So that's what we're drawing there. And then after that, we have to accomplish the cheek cuts. So we have to get the angles that make that arrowhead at the top of a hip rafter. So to do that in... Um, Every, a hip rafter runs at a 45 degree angle. In plan view, this line here is a 45 degree angle. So if we want to create that 45 degree angle, if this is three quarters of an inch, then this is three quarters of an inch horizontally. So that's why off this line here that represents the, 
the point, we come back three quarters of an inch. And then when we tilt our circular saw at 45 degree angle, tilt the base at a 45, and we cut just to the waist side of this line, it'll automatically create this cheek cut that runs through the point. So uh, there's two options of getting both of these cuts. You can mark this same line three quarter back on both sides and then cut along both those lines to create that point. Or you can also do it from both the lines on the same side. So you could go three quarter offset. So we come three quarter back to make this line here. You could go three quarter ahead as well and make a line here. And you'd cut along this line first and then, and then you turn your saw around and cut on this line. And that also would create this double cheek cut at the top. So these are the lines we use to lay out the um, top plum cuts or the cheek cuts of a hip rafter. The lines on the top edge are optional, but they can help you see what the resulting cut should look like. Later on, when we're laying out the bird's mouth cuts, we measure our line length off of this point though, because that's where the 12 feet of run is running to, to the center of the ridge. So we don't cut this right away. We wait till we do the full layout so that we can measure from this point. 